Hello and welcome to this video on section 3.4. In this video we are going to focus only on the fallacies of presumption. Section 3.4 has other types of fallacies as well and we will uh, focus on those in the next video. According to Hurley in the, in the fallacies of presumption the premises presume what they purport to prove. A presumption is basically just another word for an assumption and what happens in these fallacies is that something is assumed that can be questioned. Assumptions are many times hidden. They're not explicitly stated. Uh, unlike premises, the premises are explicitly written or stated. Uh, assumptions can be in the background and can be hidden, but we know that they have to be there in order for the argument to, to get started or to work. So what happens in these fallacies is that something is assumed that should not be assumed or that is questionable, um, yet the person who commits the fallacy assumes it as if there is no problem. The first type is uh, begging the question. Um, there are three variants of begging the question, but you only need to know the variant in which the conclusion is a rewording or a repetition of the premises. Um, by simply rewording or repeating the premises, the conclusion doesn't really tell us anything new, and thus a question is begged. Basically, uh, the idea here is that the, pre that the premises should point to a conclusion and that the conclusion is something new and not just a repetition of the premises. Here's an example. The death penalty is morally wrong because it is unethical for the state to execute prisoners. Okay, first of all here, the conclusion is that the death penalty is morally wrong. We know that the premise is that it is unethical for the state to execute prisoners. We have that um, indicator word there, because. And so basically what's going on here is that that premise, it is unethical for the state to execute prisoners, is being repeated or reworded in the conclusion, um, which is that the death penalty is morally wrong. And that is because saying that it is unethical for the state to execute prisoners is the same thing as saying that the death penalty is morally wrong. There's nothing new being said. Basically all that's going on here is that we have a rewording of that premise. And all of this then begs the question, why is the death penalty morally wrong? Our next fallacy is a complex question. According to Hurley, in a complex question, two or more questions are asked in the guise of a single question, and a single answer is then given to both of them. Um, even though complex question is, is a question, it really isn't an argument, there is an implicit or hidden argument that is assumed within the question. And so, uh, Typically, um, there will be an answer that is, exp th there are two answers, and um, depending on how the person answers, they commit themselves to a certain argument. Here's an example. Have you stopped selling cocaine yet? Okay, so the two possible answers here are obviously yes or no. If the person answers yes, uh, then that means that at some point they were selling cocaine right? If the person answers no, it means that they, um, they have not stopped, that they're still selling cocaine. Either way, there is a presumed or assumed argument here that the person has at some point engaged in selling cocaine. And so that is obviously fallacious because uh, it, it is wrong to just basically make the person um, have, have this presumption of uh, being made for the the person that is being asked the question. Okay, the next fallacy is false dichotomy. In false dichotomy, two alternatives are presented as being mutually exclusive when in fact they are not. A conclusion is then drawn by eliminating one of these alternatives. So the false dichotomy fallacy involves a kind of illegitimate use of the either or disjunction. Um, the fallacy assumes that these two alternatives are mutually exclusive. Remember, we said that informal fallacies involved, uh, involve content, they involve language, and in many cases they involve a manipulative use of language. The either-or fallacy is a good example of where language is being used in a kind of manipulative way by making it appear as if these two things are the only alternative. There, it's, there, it, it's being deceptively used um, because we know that there are other alternatives. The either-or disjunction can be legitimately used. Remember that the disjunctive syllogism involves a legitimate logical use of the either-or. 
uh, disjunction. But here what happens is that there's an illegitimate or logically illegitimate misuse. Here's an example. Either we elect a Republican or we risk the decline of our, of our country. So the person is making this look mutually exclusive as if these are the only two options, when in fact they're not. How do we know that they're not the only options? Well, it is possible to elect a Democrat and the country doesn't go into decline. And it is also possible to elect a Republican um, and uh, the country does go into decline, right? So basically, um, this shows that there are other alternatives that are being completely ignored, uh, yet the person makes it seem as if these are the only two options. Okay, the last one is suppressed evidence. And in suppressed evidence, a key piece of information, uh, which is evidence, um, evidence is a specific type of information. Um, this key piece of information is omitted or left out, uh, which if it were not omitted would lead to the conclusion not being accepted. Um, so in, at, at the level of assumption, remember there's always something assumed here in these fallacies. Um, what the person assumes is that leaving out such a key premise is, is fine or okay when in fact it isn't. Here's an example. You should buy this 2012 Toyota pickup truck. It runs great and it only has a few thousand miles. So uh, if there was a key piece of information left out, like for example that the truck had been involved in two serious accidents, which have affected the engine, then the conclusion is not likely to be accepted, right? And that conclusion here is that you should buy this 2012 Toyota pickup truck because we know that when people find out information like that, they're less likely to accept the conclusion um, that, for example, this, this pickup truck should be bought. Okay, so there is something assumed here, and that is that leaving that information out is okay when, in fact, it is not okay to leave out that information. Okay, so that is it for this video. Um, we have um, one more video in this section in which we will focus on uh, two different, two other different types of fallacies.